Okay, um, so uh, we're here with Ma Maria Heuschke from Wikimedia Germany, and she's going to be talking about um, the, uh, uh, the European Language Equity Project. Yes, thank you, Philip. And thank you for setting all this up. It's very exciting to be live on YouTube. Um, <clears throat> I think that's my first time, so I try to act normal and not nervous. Um, thank you all for, for coming. Thank you all for having me at the um, CEE this year. This is my first CEE meeting. Um, so I'm very happy and I feel very uh, lucky to be here and to talk about um, one project, Philip just said it, it's the European Language Equality um, Project, but the session name I gave it is Get Together, Partnering Around Languages in Europe, because um, I think the main, um, the main thing about this project or what makes it so cool and so big is that there are a lot of people pulling together their resources and trying to make a difference. And in case you like kind of like stop hearing me or stop seeing me or anything weird happens, just open your mics um, and let me know, but I'm also seeing the chat. Um, yeah, so just a short introduction. Um, my name is Maria. I've been with Wikimedia Deutschland for five years. I've, um, I'm having my anniversary in a week, I think, um, a five years anniversary. And most of this time I've been with the volunteer support um, team and making, just like making volunteer projects together uh, with mainly uh, volunteers from the German speaking Wikipedia, supporting um, the local hubs in Germany, doing all kinds of this stuff. And more recently, I've been more involved with, um, say, third party um, projects, projects with um, um, partner uh, organizations. And one of them is the ELI project. I've been speaking about this at the Arctic Not, Not this year, which is the, um, the language conference. Um, and now I'm here and I'm very happy. So this session is supposed to be more of a discussion, I would say, than just um, me showing slides of the project. So depending on how much we want to discuss and how much we um, want to share, this is gonna be a shorter or longer session. I'll uh, start at the starting point for this project. Um, the EU has 24 official languages, um, but not just this, there are also more than or 60 regional and minority languages um, in the EU next to also um, migrant languages or sign languages. So a big pool of languages and yet only 24 um, are officially the languages of the EU. And also digital support <clears throat> only exists, or not only is ex but mainly exists for, of course, English, German, French, Spanish, and also Italian. Many other um, languages in the EU, in Europe, um, have a much harder time with digital support and language technologies. So that's kind of where the project is um, starting from. The challenge that the project partners are seeing in this is that how um, can we enable all those languages, not just the 24 official languages and not just English and German, um, regardless of their conditions, regardless of the number of speakers they have now, regardless of like the number of websites that are in those uh, languages, to kind of um, achieve something like full digital equality in Europe and have all those languages um, surviving in like in the digital sphere. That is why a lot of people 
um, that have been working around languages in Europe for many years have come up with a project that started at the beginning of the year in January and that is going to run until uh, June next year, so it's only one and a half years. <clears throat> and what they are trying to do is to start writing a plan for the European Commission um, to let them know what should be done in order to have something like full digital equality for all European languages. As um, some languages that I just talked about already do have a very good digital support to have a lot of um, corpora, to have a lot of um, digitized and online resources. This project is more focused on under-resourced European languages um, than like the, the big or the more resourced languages. The partner, um, the partner consortium consists of 53 organizations, which, I, which is probably quite a lot. And I'm very happy I'm not responsible for um, the project management of like all those um, organizations. Um, and um, the, the partners consists of um, like a lot of language um, experts, language institutes, uh, language communities, but there are also some industry players, um, some people who are, um, who are like in the business of language technologies, there's SAP, um, and then there are also networks like, uh, for example, Wikimedia, Wikipedia, that they wanted to give input on this plan and on this agenda that they're writing up. The goal, like I said, it's going to run until next summer. And the goal for this is they have planned a workshop with members of the European Parliament and to kind of have this plan in the hand and go there and tell them what they should be doing. And what has been in the making for some years now is kind of a change at the policy level and the introduction of a new EU funding program for language equality in Europe um, with the hope or like hoping that this will make a difference for a lot of smaller organizations, for a lot of language institutes to um, have a place where they can apply funding um, for. Um, before we start the discussion or before I um, kind of come up with or show you the, the, the questions that I've brought with me this morning, um, I also wanted to talk about some interesting results until now. So um, the, the main partners have been working uh, first and foremost on like that whole thing of what digital language equality means. Um, and they've been like writing down the definition. Maybe. Is that better if I hold my mic like this? Yeah, okay. Um, but what I found more inter interesting than just like the text or like the definition is the as a metric that they came up with um, that is supposed to kind of proxy or measure the digital readiness of languages and not only this, but also that shows progress that can or that has been made or that will be made over the years for those languages. Um, and the way they do this is they take into account all the things that are out there for the languages, for those respective languages. Um, like, do they have tools and services available in those languages? What kind of corpora do they have? Um, what kind of projects are already running on the languages? Are there any organizations? Are there any linguists and this kind of stuff for the languages? But what is also going into this calculation are contextual factors, which I found super interesting. And there they also, I mean, they measure some stuff that I think is, comes to mind very easily, like number of speakers, but also, um, like what kind of resources do the language communities have? Do they have a lot of time on their hand? Do they have um, yeah, to kind of work or like support and promote the languages? Um, are the languages spoken in school, at home? Are they taught anywhere throughout, the, um, throughout Europe? This kind of stuff. And in the end, it's supposed like 
the, the end result is supposed to be a big dashboard where you can have an overview um, of each language with like, those kind of things and that show you where the language is um, or like what kind of status the language has at the moment. So I'm kind of looking forward to this. Um, yeah, and to um, have all of this information, some or like most of the project partners are at the moment writing reports on the status of um, certain languages and the language technology. So they're collecting data sets from everywhere, I guess, and kind of um, compiling this metadata, but also um, providing contextual information for the languages and the language communities. This is a screenshot from um, the, the ELI web page and one of the overviews of what kind of um, languages and language reports are being written at the moment um, and who's responsible for this. Um, I just highlighted here uh, some CEE languages where the our project partners are writing um, those language reports about at the moment. The, the deadline for this is end of the month, so we hope to see some very interesting results by the end of the year already. Um, yeah. And then so like the first round of partners is compiling those status of European languages reports and the second part or like another big part of partners um, are more focused on um, conducting surveys and like talking to the respective communities and networks about the challenges, their wishes, their problems, their needs um, when it comes to languages and like, like using those languages online and um, language technologies. And that's actually where we, um, where we are most active because they asked us to um, collect perspective and voices from our communities and from the movement uh, to um, include in the report and include in the plan for the European Union. So there has been a survey that was spread through um, Europe. Um, I think in total there have been 200 um, answers, but we also received answers from 22 Wikimedians, Wikipedians. Um, just if you hear some like loud noises, there are, there are some kids activity. Uh, in the background. I hope I get through <laughs> through it without any uh, kids content being presented here, but um, we'll see. Um, so yeah, we did get some very interesting answers in this survey already um, from like big projects like the German speaking, the French speaking Wikipedia, but we also were able to um, um, collect the perspective of um, other Wikipedias of other Wikimedia projects, which I, which I'm very happy about, which um, I'm really looking forward to analyze, uh, like the the whole thing. Um, this is still ongoing, so I wouldn't be able to present like the all all the answers and all the details now. But I did have a look at the uh, open answers in the survey, um, which I already found super interesting. Um, of course, we, as the Wikimedia movement, um, the the term open source and like free licensing shows up a lot in the in the question as as challenges as stoppers for uh, languages and especially like um, small languages that even if there are dictionaries, even if there are language resources, um, they might not be open source, so you might not be able to use them in the projects that you're doing or in the tools that you're doing. Um, another quote that um, I really like, and that's why I um, included it here as well, is that it would be best to support people learning languages and not machines, which I, which I feel is a very helpful uh, perspective for this project because we have a lot of industry people in there who are more focused on like the technological side of things and just asking like what kind of what kind of tools do we need what kind of services are not there yet um, 
but that might be forgetting that there also need to be people speaking those languages or using this technology for the languages. Otherwise, it makes maybe not so much sense. So this is the part um, where I'm hoping to hear something from you guys. Um, I was planning on doing breakout rooms, but I think we're not that many. So we should be able to just um, discuss here and have yeah. people either contribute in the chat or raise their hand, open their mic, or go directly to the um, etherpad that Philip, I think, already posted. Thanks for that. Tana posted. So, Tana. Philip. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. um, so yeah, the kind of questions that I'm wondering or that the uh, project partners are wondering is kind of just collect everything that we want to ask the European Union to change or to do uh, for the digital survival of languages. And as we're at the CEE uh, community meetup here, please like uh, share what this means for your language and your language communities. Um, also, what kind of gaps and problems you encounter. Um, like I said, the, a lot of what we've heard until now is that resources are not available. Um, if they are available, they're not open source. And then I'd also be interested in kind of hearing your vision in what kind of maybe also more like science fiction visions, what kind of things um, you want to see in your language community that are not there yet or that are not available today. <sighs> so much talking. <laughs> it was great. Um, so, uh, Shana, would you like to, to moderate the questions? To moderate the question is uh, to ask people who raise their hand. Yes, I can. I can. I can funnel you, funnel you the people. We have two people who've raised their hand already. Yeah, two, but I cannot see who raised. Oh, their hand. Let, me, let me see. Uh, so it's Shalko first, and then Gerion. You can unmute yourself. Uh, yourself. Thanks. Uh, <clears throat> thank you for the presentation. Uh, I'm not sure I understood everything uh, clearly, although it was well presented, just the kind of complexity of seeing this from my perspective is uh, high. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, so coming from the former Yugoslavia region, where there is a lot of language politics around <clears throat> Serbian, Croatian, Bosnian, Montenegrin, Serbo-Croatian, Wikipedia prospects. I'm interested if there were discussions that were uh, very explicitly about uh, rigid stand rigidity of standards uh, in languages and how they are uh, applied in, in technical practices, because I fear uh, that we have machines being more flexible than people, uh, especially in Wikimedia movement. There are a lot of Wikipedians who insist on patrolling and, and not in most kind way uh, how people use language. So for, for uh, certain polycentric languages, this can be really toxic. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, yeah, if, if someone is constantly, you know, uh, fixing your work, and, and, and especially if you are a new user. And I think in corporate world, people are much more relaxed because it's a less politically charged field. It's more focused on economic uh, benefits than on political representation and identity politics. So I'm just curious if there were any discussions that were explicitly about uh, this uh, political uh, use of language, especially through through these like standardizing uh, norms, mm -hmm. to 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 yeah, uh, because this would be interesting discussion to have in between these activities and our own problems inside of uh, Wikipedia's. 
Um, so looking at the answers I've got from the Wikip and Wikimediums until now, this has not been a discussion. This has not been brought up. Um, I believe that this will be part of the discussion in the in the language reports that are um, that are being written down by the language experts by the language uh, institutions and organizations at the moment. Um, but up until now, this has not um, been brought up by um, by anyone in the survey. So I'm I'm very happy to. Um, hear you bringing it up. Now, I also see that Philip is posting um, some input on this from the Wikimania, Wikimania 2015. Yes, so I did a presentation back then, like looking at um, free, like English, German and French in terms of how they deal with like being a pluricentric language, meaning like the different centers that define the same, like the common language in a different way. Um, or in the case of French, there's a central or like apparently a central um, organization that, that defines what, what the French language is and what isn't. Mm -hmm. I mean, it also exists in German, but um, it's more, more diverse in, in that way. Um, but that's more like focus on how Wikipedia deals with it and not necessarily like on how like um, the EU uh, deals with it because it's, it's as I shall mention, it's a very political thing as well. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, it's also a part um, a part of how um, language technology providers are dealing with it, like what kind of um, resources they're training their software on, if this is a more standardized uh, way of the language or not. Yeah, I mean, it also happens when, when people learn languages. Like, for example, no one learns Austrian German. Mm -hmm. But they all learn German German. So that kind of then makes Austrian German feel antiquated because you don't get come across it until you actually come to Vienna or somewhere. So um, it does like definitely shift in one direction. And it also works the other way in terms of like German TV being shown in Austria and then kids being more used to German terms than Austrian terms. Mm -hmm. Um <laughs> Okay, so, Thomas, just to just to, to carry on this conversation, what, why are you doubting exactly? <laughs> I'm learning Austrian German, not German German, but okay. Yeah, but you like if you don't live in Austria, you don't live Aust you don't learn Austrian German, right? Yeah, true. Yeah. Okay, so I didn't want to disrupt the the, the, the show of hands too much. Hey, Gereon can continue if uh, Jacob Latze was uh, a question was answered. Okay, for you. Yes, um, I just want to uh, comment on question number one. Uh, uh, languages in, um, in the digital world for survival of languages. Uh, now we have several dictionaries and they're actually quite good because um, it's not only the words, but uh, it's all etymology, pronunciation, grammar uh, for each word. They're quite extensive. And some of the CE world are especially good. Like I remember the Polish one, this is quite a good dictionary. Almost all language versions have it. And um, I think it's a unifying thing for a language, but I don't see in the translation context, in the uh, interpretation world, uh, any reference to Wiktionary? Nobody uh, in the professional field or uh, uses it. Um, and I think we need more lobbying on the uh, European Union level, on the uh, pan-European level for Wiktionaries. That's my comment to mm. question number one. Can I comment on that? Of course. <laughs> Um, hi, Gerion, by the way. Long time. Hi. <laughs> it's nice to see you. Um, 
Yeah, I've also noticed that uh, when kind of doing um, an overview of, uh, let's say, like scientific papers that are using dictionaries or that um, are commenting on dictionaries, and there's definitely way more stuff on, uh, let's say, the lexicographical um, data part of on Wikidata being recognized by uh, the scientific world, like on Google Scholar or anything, than dictionaries, which I found very interesting because dictionaries have been around um, much longer. Um, so that was just my comment on this. But now I, I happily uh, give over to the moderating again. Okay, now Samat, uh, you. It's your turn. Yeah. Thank you. Um, my question is uh, is very similar, but was the first topic in the question uh, discussion part. That um, is this uh, study or program is focusing on the standard languages or or more detailed uh, in 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 local dialect and accents as well, because support of the standard languages usually or many times. Usually, it is uh, a completely different level than, than than local dialects, which, which yeah. So I don't want to more did explain. I think this is clear. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think the um, like the language reports um, um, are focusing on, or let's say the the metadata that is being um, collected and like all those um, projects are for the. Um, um, what are the standard languages, but also um, like in the reports themselves for um, the different, let's say, regions that uh, those languages um, are spoken. Spanish or French or uh, English are not just spoken in one, one part of this, or not just spoken in, in Europe and the EU. Um, however, I don't think that um dialects as such are going to be included in the um in the dashboard that i mentioned in the beginning that is supposed to show like the the digital readiness of languages um but this reminds me of an interesting discussion that has been going on um in the in the project consortium in one of the last meetings when it came about why um we are not focusing more on um migrant languages like why uh, we don't include Arabic or Turkish in those kind of studies even though we know that a lot of those uh, languages are spoken in the EU and are going to be more and more um, important in Europe as well um, and in apparently this is more a restriction from um, let's say uh, funding or like project policy level that um, the yeah the EU just wants to focus more on its official languages and its regional languages and that this is what they're funding and supporting um, but they're not there yet to kind of embrace the whole um, the whole bunch of languages which uh, is much more than the, than what I've been talking about. Okay, next uh, question is uh, from Lars Aronson. Please join. So I, I uh, can, can uh, agree that the European Union should uh, focus on Turkish, Arabic and Russian uh, because uh, larger languages work like hubs for smaller languages. As an example, if I want to study Swedish, Hungarian, I have almost no dictionaries on the market for that. But if I learn English and German, then I have plenty of English, Hungarian and German, Hungarian dictionaries to choose from. And, and uh, both English, German and also Russian and Turkish work like such hubs from where you can go to other smaller languages. I want to mention uh, on Swedish Wiktionary some years ago, on Swedish Wiktionary, 
we list on the front page how many words we have from different languages. Uh, and uh, that list was a little bit short. And, and so we made it a project to cover all the 24 uh, European uh, uh, standard languages. Uh, and to have at least 500 words in each of these 24 languages. And, and we achieved this within uh, two or three months, actually. So 500 words, that's very simple. You have the digits one to 10, and you have the name of the months, the name of the weekdays, and some very simple words like bread and bicycle. And, and soon enough, you have 500 words. And, and uh, so if you go to the front page of Swedish Wiktionary, this is an example of what Wiktionary can do for language diversity, uh, and and it needs a lot more work, but uh, the the connection between small or medium sized languages like Swedish and Hungarian is, is very weak. Swedish mm -hmm. Wiktionary has very few words in Hungarian, and Hungarian Wiktionary I have no idea if they have any words in Swedish, but if we go through. Polish or German or some of the, lo the larger languages, we can find the connections that we need. So this was not a, a question, more of a remark. That, that is very okay. Okay, so if there is not uh, any question from participants, uh, do we say something about tools or applications or gaps and problems encounter, encounter when working with uh, languages online? Any questions on these topics? Yeah, as Samad mentions in, in the chat, I think Abstract Wikipedia can also uh, fill a, a few of those gaps. Um, I mean, like typical gaps and problems when working online is, especially when you're translating things, uh, finding the right meaning and wording for those translations. Um, but I'm also not sure how that would be solvable in a way that's just like your day-to-day -day translation issues that you have. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I I think that especially Slavic languages are uh, not uh, so easy to translate with uh, machines. Yeah, definitely. But why is that at the moment? Sorry? I was just um, um, referring to what you just said, Tana, um, that it's uh, the Slavic languages are not so... Um... Yeah, they are not so easy to translate with the machines, that's yeah. what I said. Yeah. Uh, because Slavic languages ha uh, have some uh, grammar, which is not so... Uh, uh, I don't know, it's a uh, computer can't uh, translate it... Uh, just like that, you have to know mm -hmm. who who is doing what. For example, yeah, the, the context yeah. is very important. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah but I, I I mean, this is one of the things that um, are very like tangible, right? That machine translation and the software behind that are not like working for a certain set of languages. Yeah. Um, Someone was curious about because we have a few uh, uh, people in 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 this uh, session who are from countries outside the European Union, like, uh, is the consortium also looking at language like Ukrainian? I wasn't sure if I found it in the in the list. Um, yeah, let's go back in the list that I was showing. Oh, wait, I'm going back. <laughs> <laughs> um, Yeah, I don't. I don't think there. Um, there's a, a a group that is writing a, a language um, report on, but I do think it shows up on the 
um, on the website. Because it is a quite a big migrant language nowadays in the European Union. Mm -hmm. um, um, yeah, um, Armenian is also not there and Georgian neither. So this would be like typical. Yeah. Also, um, one language is missing also. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I also, I, um, um, I don't see anyone um, adding it to the list in the on the website. But Icelandic is on there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but it's a bit confusing, like which associated country languages are on there and are not, in a way. But I guess it depends on like which which partner is actually looking at this and contributing. Yeah, I think so too. This is uh, what how the uh, consortium has kind of been um, built by the um, by the project leaders um, that they've been looking at where they have the ties and where they have um, um, the the people working in like the in the language institutes and kind of all bring them together and have them contribute. But to be honest, I don't, I'm, I'm not sure why um, uh, Ukrainian doesn't show up on, on the list. I don't want to um, pretend like I know, but yeah. Now we are seven minutes before the break. Is there anything else about this presentation? Someone want to say, to ask, to note? If, I mean, if you have anything um, that you want to add or anything um, that you think I should definitely know or this project should include in all the uh, things that the European Union should read, you can also just reach out to me. I'm happy to include anything that reaches me um, <laughs> via email. I included my uh, contact here. You can also reach out to me on my meta page or wherever. Um, and I can also just share my final thoughts. Like I said in the in the beginning, that I think what this project is really trying to do is to get as many resources and as many people and expertise together to have like one, um, like kind of one big move towards the European Union. And also by this make some voices heard that um, normally maybe not be included in those kind of EU projects. Um, um, uh, by the way, can I? Is there any way that the um, the chat is also going into like the ether pad? Because I think there were some very. Um, so the chat is also in the rec recording, so we uh, can okay. copy that over later. Um, uh, Samat yeah. has something to say, please, Samat. Thank you. Um, I forgot, but I will come back a second. Ah, yes, I know, I know. Uh, my question was that that at, at this point, I don't see that the Wikimedia community or uh, the chapters uh, could uh, could, uh, could be involved somehow. Or my question is that do you do you plan to do this cooperation with the with the local partners, institutions, or or do you need any any input for from at this point? from the Wikimedia world. Yeah, um, definitely the Wikimedia world there, that this is what we've been um, focusing on um, because um, other parts are already covered by, yeah, by people who are much more knowledgeable in this and then like Wikimedia Deutschland is. Um, so we're focusing on more of the Wikimedia and like the Wikimedia projects, like um, Gerian also mentioned, like um, showing the um, 
the 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 dictionaries, the work on lexemes, the work on um, small language Wikipedias, and this is going to be much more our focus. Yeah, I ask because I, if you would like to have any input, you should ask it explicitly because I, if you if you say we have a, we have partners in, in in national partners and we are doing this this. Uh, this application uh, with the partners, and then I'm not sure if how many uh, input will you receive from from local chapters or communities. Mm -hmm. um, we reached out to many people uh, directly on talk pages, and I've been making the rounds on the <laughs> on um, kind of the conferences that were happening, like CEE, the Wikidatacon, the language conference, the Arctic Knot. And um, yeah, this is how we um, how we try to reach out to people for now. Maybe it makes sense to do like uh, focused groups from time to time, uh, just uh, because I don't think many Wikipedians are also exiting their own routine uh, Wikipedia work. Mm. Um, so yeah, if you want to have like a good overview of um, all positions, uh, not just people who are circulating in international activities, mm -hmm. then maybe this makes sense. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm happy um, to uh include anyone who wants who wants to say anything about this um yeah all right okay. and all right thank you maria <laughs> thank you for having me again um this was very nice um yeah, yeah it's always excited. nice to talk about languages in Europe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, for sure. It's a very uh, exciting topic. Um, and I'm happy to see the, the other sessions today.